to our friend, Roger Castillo. Roger was an exceptional son, a good husband, a good father to his three sons, a good friend, and a loyal police officer who would be greatly missed by his family, friends, and the community at large. His mom, Odalina, is a faithful servant at our church who has always been and always should be very proud of her son, Odalina. Su hijo Roger fue un héroe. Usted puede estar muy orgullosa de él y puede estar segura que su muerte no será en vano. Nuestro Dios tiene el poder de, tomar, de tornar todo lo que el enemigo intenciona para mal en algo bueno. Para esos que aman a Dios. Su hijo está en el cielo y usted lo verá de nuevo. The Bible reads in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 11. It says, our friend sleeps. And this biblical expression is more than just an illusion. It's a reality. It's not just a way to soften the, uh, the painful reality of death. It is a truth found in the Bible, both in the Old and the New Testament. And why did Christ refer to death as sleep? But because he knew very well that what the psalmist said in Psalm 127, 2 was true. He says he gives his beloved sleep. He's given Roger sleep. Roger was and is his beloved. When we refer to Roger as a friend, we cover all that are present here today. Because Roger was an intimate friend to his wife, his three sons, and all those who gave him the opportunity to be his friend. He was a friend in the strictest, strictest sense of the word, as the book of Proverbs says in chapter 17, verse 17, at all times a friend loves. Roger always forgave. Roger never held pain in his heart. He loved everyone and forgave everyone. And this is how Roger was. He loved everyone at all times. So what does it mean for Roger to be asleep? Well, one, it means to see God. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 5, 8, this is Jesus speaking. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It also means that he's to meet up with friends that went before him. In the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 20, 36, Paul said, David, having served his own generation according to the will of God, slept and was reunited with his parents. And third, it means to wait for a reunion with his friends in the future. Paul writes in the in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. These verses serve as consolation if you have the assurance of seeing Roger again in heaven. But that is strictly up to you. It depends on us. If we prepare ourselves as required by the word of God, we will see him again. When we close our eyes forever here on this earth and open them once more in the presence of the almighty God. Roger asked Jesus to come into his heart and accepted him as his Lord and Savior. If Roger could be asked today, if he could stand here in front of all of you and be asked, Roger, what legacy would you like to leave your family, your friends, the people that you love the most? And he loved everyone, we all know that. The answer would be only one. He would clearly say, eternal life is all that I would want every one of them to have. And right now, as I close, I'd like to ask um, if you would please repeat with me what is known as a sinner's prayer. The Bible says we have all sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So I'd like for you to rise to repeat with me the sinner's prayer. If you feel it in your heart that you do want to say that prayer, don't feel obligated to. And repeat after me. Father God, on this day, 
I repeat with my mouth, and I confess what I believe in my heart, that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for me to give me eternal life. Today, I receive him as my Lord and my Savior, and only he will I serve for the rest of my life. Today, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I am guaranteed that I will have eternal life. I'm going to repeat that prayer in Spanish for the benefit of those that do not speak English. Padre, en este momento, confieso con mi boca lo que creo en mi corazón, que Jesús es el Hijo de Dios, que murió por mí para darme vida eterna. Hoy yo lo recibo en mi corazón como mi Rey, mi Señor y mi Salvador. Doy gracias porque sé que hoy mi nombre ha sido escrito en el libro de la vida. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. You may be seated. I'm going to close with a priestly prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. May God bless you abundantly.